So now you all can open up this particular Excel file first code which I shared with you all. Okay, so now we'll be understanding the back end very carefully. Um, we'll be now starting with writing our first code uh, in VBA. Now very first thing is for that we need the developer tab. All right. And here in the developer tab, you have to click on this visual basic. The moment you click on this visual basic, it will take you to the VBA backend. All right. Or you can use the shortcut Alt F11 or Alt F and F11. Right. Whatever works for you. Alt F11. Okay. So now you click on this and it takes you over here. It takes you over here. Right. I'll just zoom this particular screen. So you have certain areas. So now let us understand the different areas of this visual basic for application. This is how it looks like. This is the back end of Excel. Now here we have the project explorer. This is basically the project window or pro project explorer where we see the different names of the workbooks which are open. So here I have just one workbook open. If you have more than one workbook open, you will see the name of all the workbooks. All right. So we just have one workbook. So it is in this particular manner then you all can see we have first code if you have more than one workbook so you will be having different um, projects then uh, we have different sheets which are here so here you all can see we have how many sheets we have one two three four sheets so that is why we have one two three four sheets right Okay, this gray portion is basically the coding portion where we'll write our code. Now here you all can click on view and click on code. So this opens up the coding screen. This opens up the coding screen, right? <clears throat> the macros are recorded, the whatever macro we recorded in the previous class are actually recorded in a module. All right, we do not see any module over here. To insert a module, you have to click on insert module. So this is the place where we'll be actually writing all our codes and whatever codes you had recorded in the previous class is actually being uh, recorded over here in a module. Okay, these different sheets also will record some uh, codes that we'll see in the later class. Great. Now uh, there is another window called as the property window. So just click on this view. Click on properties window. So we have the properties window over here. Now what do you mean? What do you understand by the properties window? So when you click on any sheet, suppose I click on sheet one. So it will open up the, it will open up the properties of sheet one. If you click on workbook, it will open up the properties of this workbook that you are dealing with. So what I will do, one, I will just split my screen into two. If you, if you all want, you all can also do this. So just take your cursor over here <clears throat> and select this. On the left hand side, I want the first code. All right. So I've just split it into two for easier understanding. Now here we have, here we have the sheet one. I've selected sheet one. So it gives me all the properties which are related to sheet one. All right. Now here we have uh, the name of the sheet. So this name is the backend name. Means this is the name that my coding uses. This is not the name which you will see. So the name which you see is over here, the name. Here, this is the name that you see. So if you change this, first underscore code, hit enter, you will see the name, the display name. So this is basically the display name. And this is the backend name which my VBA uses for coding. All right. Uh, then you have different options over here. You have uh, display right to left and so basically it gives you all the sheets from left to right over here. If you want you can change this. So here the sheet is visible. If you click on hidden the sheet will be hidden from the Excel. So see the Excel in the Excel file the sheet is hidden. Now again I have to click on the uh, unhidden visible. So it again makes it visible. I'll have to click all right, I have to move to sheet one and I have to click on visible. So it gives me the sheet becomes visible. So it's again the back end uh, how you can change and use different properties. Also, we'll be doing and learning more about workbook and worksheet events in the later class. All right. 
<clears throat> now there is another window so these two windows there is another win window called as the immediate window so you can click on view and click on immediate window so this opens up the immediate window over here all right in the immediate window imme immediate window this basically answers most of your questions whatever you ask to your uh, VBA will answer most of the questions over here. So here what I can do is I can just question mark, give a question mark and I want to know how many sheets are there. So you all can write worksheets dot count. Make sure you're using correct uppercase, lowercase. So the moment you click on dot, it gives you a lot of options. I'm cl clicking on this count. Just use the down arrow, click on tab. All right. So dot count, hit enter. How many sheets are there? Four. All right. Question mark. If you want, you can know the maybe, for example, in this particular cell, B2, I've written my name, for example. So now if I write range, how to refer to a cell, you have to use the function range. Range B2, you can write small B2 or caps B2, it will understand. Dot value what is the value shivangi if i change this value if i change this value um if i change this value and again take my cursor over here and run actuators or if you want you can give a number all right 100 so this is immediate window why do we use it when you are writing a code and in the middle of a long code, you want to just maybe you forgot the number of sheets and you don't want to move back to your Excel. Or maybe you forgot was, what was there in one particular cell. Or maybe you want to refer to some other particular workbook, some other particular worksheet. So you can just ask your VBA over here and you'll get your answer. Clear? This is how this will work. Right? Now also we have the object browser. So let me just close this. Yes. And I just go to sheet one again, click on this and click on visible. Okay. Now here, uh, huh, one checker. Is it MacBook? Huh, you'll not split screen nahi hota easily all right so another thing um <clears throat> go to view and then click on object browser and here we have again the different classes so here we'll understand this at the later stages here we have all the libraries basically all the libraries across the all applications now i'll click on excel so this is only excel specific libraries we have autocorrect we have add-ins we have chart options, we have data table options, we have graphic options. So we have a lot of multiple like n number of options classes over here. And whenever you click on any one particular class, um, within that each class, we have the members of that. So if I just click on maybe add-ins, so we have the different uh, members of the add-ins. What do you mean by members? View object browser. Okay, so now again, when I was writing worksheets dot count, remember, so that dot count, count is a part, is a member of worksheet. All right, so these are the different classes. Each class will have the different, for example, we also have pivot tables, right? So in pivot tables, what are, we have pivot tables dot count, dot creator, dot applications. All of these are basically the members of the pivot table group. Clear? So this is again there, which uh, you may use some at a later stage. So we'll just remove this. We don't need this for the time being. Okay. Let us move back to a module. So this is the module. This is the, if you all want, you all can remove the properties window as well. This particular window, if you all want. Otherwise, you all can just keep it as it is. No problem. Right. Just you can adjust the size as well. Okay, so this is the place where we'll actually start with our code. Now let us write a first code. Let us just break that uh, dar that we have for coding. Insert. Click on insert and then 
we have already inserted the module i hope all, all of you those who haven't please insert a module insert and module another way of inserting a module is right click right click and then click on insert click on module theek hai right click insert module so this is the module that you have over here this is the module that you have over here now here let me again insert a particular code now for that you have to click on insert again are you on your module yeah click on insert click on procedure so procedure is actually the function or the code where we will start to write now again a dialog box opens up add procedure <clears throat> in this add procedure again the name which were given which we were giving for the record macro remember this is the same name a macro is nothing but a set of steps that is also code that we are writing we'll see one of the recorded macro what were the steps that we had recorded we'll see this after once we write one particular macro so i'll click on type as sub we have type as function as well this we'll do when we'll be creating user defined functions in vba the scope is public and private basically what is the difference public is any code which you can run in your excel if it's private this basically means you cannot run it in excel it can only be executed within the visual basic within the visual basic all right so i'll click on okay. uh, i'll just have to give the name so maybe you can give any name if you want just a demo uh, if you if you're creating a demo code so i'll just give uh, my first code let me just write my first code again no spaces click on okay so we have public by the word sub this is sub routine okay this is basically a routine that we are creating so subroutine my first code now my first code will be message box i'm creating a message box what is the prompt that you a message box is something which is displayed now message a normal message so my prompt will be hello congratulations you have written your first code anything all right i'm just writing any thing i'm just giving any message message box and the moment you click on enter automatically it takes capital m capital b because vba is case sensitive case sensitive it's not actually case sensitive because it changes the cases on its own so you you may not call it case sensitive as such generally case sensitive are programming languages which will not change the cases on its own so this is not actually case sensitive but yes it will change on its own so this is what i have written hello congratulations you have written your first code kaun sa insert procedure theek hai but make sure you are in your module 1 double click on your module 1 and then now i'll click on please see i'll click on this run button this run button will execute my routine okay run or you can click on f and f5 for f5 click on run and see you have your code hello congratulations you have written your first code so message box is displayed okay message box is displayed another thing that we can write is now in order to create a sub routine without using the insert key again and again you will just type sub my second code and just hit enter the moment you hit enter automatically the brackets will open and close automatically they'll write n sub and you will notice the difference there is no word public by default if you write sub and sub this will by default be considered as a public routine or a public procedure by default okay i just wrote sub my second code hit enter automatically the brackets will close automatically you will have n sub now here let me write something called as we have done message box now let us see 
now let us see i am writing input box input box is basically where you want to take input from the user you want to take some input from the user i am the user of excel i am taking an input that uh, what is the prompt which you want to give so prompt is enter your name okay this is the input box hit enter the moment you do this whenever you move to excel and uh, you run the code excel will ask you enter your name give your name now once you have written your name in the message box itself in the message box itself it will give you hello uh okay then you can write maybe plus name plus space how are you so see what i have written i have done the same thing but here now hello a space the name variable which i have created over here this is a variable why this is a variable because once you use this input box once i give the input that input name is stored over here and then the message box will use this input this input over here hello the name which you have given how are you so now let us run this so enter your name i am entering my name click on okay hello shivangi how are you now you can also like like we did earlier you can also create you can also create a button for this over here and assign the code okay click okay so i have assigned the code like we did earlier all right now this is how we have run the code and understood everything now see how to step into the code and move one by one step into the code for that click on debug step into you are stepping into the code and understanding the code line by line okay or you can click on f8 the shortcut is f8 we'll use these shortcuts as we move ahead step into click on f8 again so my currently my code is over here f and f8 f8 here okay now now you can just take your cursor hover over this name you can see name equal to empty because currently we haven't put any kind of name we haven't put any input have we put any input no so it's empty f and f8 moves to the next line and once you move to once your cursor is moving to the next line meaning it this line has been executed so the input box is there you are giving an input you are giving an input okay so now you take your cursor again to the name name equal to actuators why in quotes because this is a string variable we'll see the different types of variables this is a string variable by default it is taking string as the variable okay now hello name again you can see name over here is actuators how are you so you can just now again click on f in f8 hello actuators how are you and you end your code f8 f in f8 or f8 clear clear so this is the first step towards writing your code input box message box now how can i more you know you can also enhance your uh, input box if you want if you want you can enhance your input box <clears throat> or maybe message box so when i click on this comma you also have some buttons remember in the message box we had okay right so here you can have uh, maybe we can have vb let me write vb okay so vb okay cancel vb okay cancel so that when your message box opens up you will get two buttons okay cancel okay cancel okay the title which you want to give welcome maybe okay this is the title which will be shown on the top of the message box so now this is done again if you want again you can run this and check again you can run this and check so welcome title okay cancel okay cancel okay okay 
then why do we use this VBOK okay cancel? For example, you want to perform some task when the user will input OK, some other task when the user will input cancel. In such a case, we use this VBOK okay cancel. Here we are just keeping it very basic. <clears throat> Clear? Now, let us see what are the different types of data types that we have over here. So these are the different data types. So we have byte, integer. So variable is something. What is a variable? A variable is something which can store any data. And this can change. Variable is something which can change. Constant is something which cannot change. So other are the different types of data byte. This is the storage space, the storage space which my computer will occupy. And then the range of numbers. So in byte, the range of numbers goes from 0 to 255. Integer, if it's an integer, it will go from minus 3 to, uh, to this long single. So if you're using very large number, which is larger than 33,000, 32,000, then you can use long. We have single, we have double. Double is, so you all can just see the amount of um, <clears throat> data which it can contain actually. Currency, then we have decimals. Then we have the string variable. So string variable is again the variable that we were using now. Name. By default. So in generally now you will see you don't have to always assign a type of a variable because generally your VBA is very smart to understand what type of variable you are relating and it will take it as a string. It will take it as a number. Generally they take it as a string. Generally they try to take it as a text or a string variable. So the length is again these many string variables. If it's of fixed length, you can also have a variable length or variable length, uh, variable uh, length data type is something which will have length plus 10 bytes. So the storage here is of the, suppose I have a string of four characters. So the four characters is the bytes, four bytes. It is storing four bytes. Over here for the variable length, it will store four plus 10, 14 bytes. So if it's not a very large character, try to use the string variable. Generally, we use string variables only. Then we have boolean. Sometimes you just have two outputs, true, false, zero, one. In that case, we use boolean. Then we have date. Then we have object. If you have any variable which will contain some other variable or some other object in it, worksheet, workbook, these are objects, okay? Then we have the variant. We have text. We have user-defined uh, data types that we'll see later on. So now, in order to store a variable, how to store a variable? Uh, so variable is a specific memory which holds certain value, which holds certain storage, memory storage on your PCs and you can change it, right? Always remember a variable cannot start. Suppose here I wrote the name, name equal to input box, that name was the variable. Hana, that name was the variable. Make sure you don't start it with any symbol. Make sure you don't start it with any number. Make sure you don't have spaces in your variables, right? So these are the basic things which you have to keep in mind when you are creating or giving the name to a variable. How to create a variable? The code is like this, dim. Dim is to declare. Dim, the name of the variable. For example, here we were using name. Dim name as what is the type, the data type. So generally it's a string or if you want to store it as an integer or if you want to store it as a double. What is the difference? Double is basically double precision. It will store the decimal places as well, right? So this is how you declare a variable. Now here what I could have done is that here I could have also, here I could have also written one thing as dim name as string okay this also i could have done or by default it is taking as string but this i could have done over here declared it as a string or if anyone is inputting any integer this will give you an error because you have already declared it as a string if you haven't declared it as a string and then whatever you're giving it will take as it is right another thing is constant so just like variable now what is variable? It can change its value. A constant cannot change its value. For example, I tell 6. 6 cannot change its value. Right? So now if I write name equal to 6. Here, instead of this particular thing, I write name and I write name equal to 6. 
just straight away 6. Can I change this 6 now? No, this becomes constant. How to declare a constant? So what is the difference? What is the difference? Please see. So constant is a memory location. It will hold a value like a variable, but it cannot change its value. Right? So how to declare it? You have to write constant. The word C-O-N-S. Uh, let me just zoom this. <coughs> just like you use dim. Just like you use dim over here. Similarly, we have C-O-N-S-T. Const. Const, the name of the constant, num, for example, name, num, anything, x, y, z. As whatever the type, again, the type can be anything, any data type which we have seen, byte, integer, decimal, or anything, equal to 10, whatever value you want to assign it. Clear? Right? We'll be using this. And then we have the VBA operators. So what are the different operators? So arithmetic operators, these are basic arithmetic operators like we use in Excel. String operators are and plus. So I've used plus over here in my message box. Hello plus name. Logical operators and or not. And we have the compression operators. Basically this is uh, to compare. Okay. A comparison operators or logical operators you can say. So we have equal to, not equal to, greater than all these. So this is basic that we do in Excel. Right? Ha, like string. So it will perform the same task. Alright. So here, obviously you cannot add a string and a number, but, but kind of same thing. Alright, so we have uh, almost seen what all of these are in order to if you want now in your comment as well if you want something which you don't want to execute for example if you don't want to execute this sentence so I can just or this particular line of code I can just give a single quote see when you move to the next line it changes into green the moment it changes in just a single quote Changes into green means this code will now not be executed. So when I run this again, it will ask my name. That's it. No message box. Why? Because this line is not being executed now. This code is not being executed right now. In order to declare a constant, so I can also show you how to declare a constant. See when const, maybe you can declare const pi as double. Uh, equal to 3.14 okay and then you can use this pi in future if you want don't want to use this number 31.3.14 kya hota hai aage pi ka value you can check it over here why not use excel so 14 15 93 i don't want to use this number big number again and again i can use the pi in future Right, so this is how you declare a constant. Clear? Understood? Till here, everything is sorted. Now, let us move to, now let us move to something called as control flow statements. Now, what are these control flow statements? Just a name, just a name. So, what is this? It controls the flow, flow of your statements control flow statement. The, there are two types of control flow statements that we'll be doing today. So there are two uh, uh, types. The first type is known as conditional. The first type is conditional. And the second type is basically your iterative. That is your loops. Okay. In the conditional statements, in the conditional statements, we have two types. One is if, else, and Another one is select case. Okay. So we'll be doing if else and select case. Iteratives we'll be doing later. So conditional statements. Now you are actually controlling the flow of your statement. Right? So now what is your conditional statement? What I want to do if something happens. What I don't want to do if something does not happen. Something like that. What I want to do if a particular event happens. What I want to do if the particular event does not happen. Simple, you have done if function in your Excel, similar to that, right? So now, um, let me move to the PPT again and show you all 
a basic flow of if then else if so now here as you all can see we have a simple condition you pass if the condition is true then what do you want to execute if the condition is false then what do you want to execute that is the else code so how the syntax how the syntax works if you then pass the condition if this is true then this will be the statement that i want to execute else else meaning it is false the statement is false then what should be the false statement end if you are ending the if statement so this is a very 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 basic if statement now let us just नहीं वो अंडर स्कोर नहीं एक्चुअली वो अभी यहाँ पे समझ आएगा वो पीपीटी में इट्स रिटर्न लाइक दैट इट्स नॉट अंडर स्कोर एक्चुअली सो यू जस्ट पास द कंडीशन एंड देन यू राइट ठीक है सो नाउ लेट अस गिव अ वेरी वेरी बेसिक कोड यू ऑल हैव दिस शीट राइट यू ऑल कैन ओपन शीट थ्री यू ऑल कैन ओपन शीट थ्री और लेट मी जस्ट टेक टेक इट टू द फर्स्ट शीट इट टेक इट टू द फर्स्ट शीट इट सेल्फ एंड लेट मी जस्ट राइट दिस Oh, sorry. This is a simple programming. Ha. Huh. This is a simple programming code. I've written it in cell A1. I've written it in cell A1. Okay, so I've just written it in cell A1. This is a simple programming code. Now, what I want to do is, I want to first let's just write a code first, and then we'll move to if statement. Okay, Be because we have just written two line two codes, so let us also write one simple code again. Here, what I want to do, listen to this carefully. I want to insert one row before this particular row. and i want to in each of the rows i want to write serial number name address make it in bold okay so it's very simple i just want to insert one row in cell a1 name or let me just remove this no let me just remove this let me write serial number 1 here let me write my name you all can write your own name and let me write any simple marks so ne i want to insert one row i want to insert one row on top and then i want to write serial number name marks in the top cells make it in bold italics whatever you want so let's start writing the code sub an example code so first thing is to insert the row so for that we have the syntax as rows rows again okay. now in the rows you have to so just like range function you have the rows function rows columns in the rows you give the row number So I will write one, one, first row. Okay, it will select. What this will do is this will select the first row. Rows here. Huh? One colon one. One colon one. Dot insert. So what it will do is it will insert one row. If you don't remember anything, now you can just click on this dot, and it will show you different features. We'll see this. Just one class, and you will be able to write your codes on your own. It's very simple. Rows, and then again, what do you want to do is, then again, what do you want to do is range in cell A one. Once you have inserted, now ju just imagine there is one cell, one row which has been inserted. Here you want to write value. The value of range A one will be serial number. I'll copy this. I'll see. I'll I'll copy this statement. I'll copy this line. I'll copy this line. Put it over here. Now again, in cell in range A two, 
I want to write name of student then here in cell A3 I want to write the marks okay these are the values that I want to put okay sorry it will not be A2 it will be B1 this will be C1 because it's on the first row right it's on the first row if you all want what else we can do we can change the rows we can change the rows again one colon one first row I can change it into I can change the font I can change the font into bold true I can change the font to bold if you want to underline you can write dot underline equal to true dot italics equal to true right if you <coughs> one colon one indicates this entire see when I just select this entire now what happens when you write sum and you select this entire one colon one right like that okay now again um, if I want to change the color if I want to change the color of the font so I can again write color and now there is a way of giving color in Excel or in paint anything you use RGB code what is RGB red green blue so if you open any paint paint you can open paint and you can just normally color anything and you can check the RGB code for that it happens so now I'll show you all how to check that RGB which is R G B red green blue these are the basic red green black sorry red green black are the codes using these uh, no it's blue it's blue so using these three colors you can actually create any color you can create any color using red green and blue all right so now it takes an integer from 0 to 255 any integer for example I want to change it into green color or maybe I want to change it into red color so I can make this 180 others I can make 0 or I can make it 255 because it goes up till 255 and make others as 0 green will be 0 blue will be 0 red will be taken as 180 and then you end your sub simple if you don't understand any code now just use the record macro I'll show you all and you can just analyze the code from there but is this understood is this understood now let's let's see let's run the code one by one let's run the code one by one so again I'll click on debug or you can just straight away click on FNF8 see one row has been inserted one row has been inserted F8 serial number name marks bold and color has changed end clear if you want to understand the code if you want to understand the code now for example I'm not getting as to how I can write the code I can record the code I can record the workings and I can then read the code so how to do that is this done huh. set, set, interior dot interior so I'll show you so his question is I don't want to change the color of the font but I want to change the color of the cell so we use dot interior dot color so how if for example I don't know the answer what I will do is I will record a macro how to record a macro let's just, just uh, come back to the excel screen record a macro macro one okay and give this cell any color I'm giving it as yellow okay stop recording stop recording stop recording and now what you all can do is view or maybe in the developer tab itself 
macro one is something which I recorded click on edit you were asking about edit edit now here you all can see here you all can see it has created a new module it has created a new module module 2 module 1 is where we were working they have created module 2 and they have written a code over here so what they have done is we'll understand this with end with in this class only see I have a sheet we'll be doing it so here in this selection selection dot interior why selection because my cell was selected over here so whatever your selection is selection dot interior dot pattern is solid dot color this is the name of the color so you can also write dot color equal to you can give the name of the color you can use this particular feature or you can use the rgb feature okay go to paints color anything right click and just try to locate the rgb you can get it from paints or this is the best option record a macro and check so this is what i want dot interior dot color use the same thing i'm using this 65535 in my code right now so here i'll be writing instead of this or you can insert one line huh vb red vb yellow uh, just check do you have vb yellow vb red to hota hai i'm not sure about vb yellow so here dot interior dot color and sorry uh, what was the number this was the number 65535 so i'm giving the number as 65535 okay okay but now again if i execute this it will insert one row on top of this particular so i'll just have to delete this i i'll delete this all right use the shortcut control what was the shortcut f11 alt f11 sorry alt f11 now again just step into the code step into the code f8 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 the color is changing and the interior color is changing because i did rows one colon one so it changes for the entire row if you would have done you could have also done it like this you could have also written a1 colon c1 and you know, c1 so it would have just changed it for the first three but you can anytime record a macro for one particular feature which you want to check because obviously it's not very easy to remember everything but yes if you practice you will remember most of the important things but this is how you can use your record macro feature anytime to get some basic basic details RGB. RGB is basically a coding system, color coding system with your which your Microsoft follows. Any color now has a RGB code. RGB code is basically red, green, blue. Any color. Any color. Let me quickly open paint. And here for example now, you have see RGB code. So if I'm selecting any color, so this gives me your RGB colors here see you can check for example I write 180 so what is this is the 180 color this was the color now almost this was the color that we were getting so you can have RGB colors you can get it from here all right generally we you can use record macro and check what is the number is it clear till here how to you know just write a simple lines of code All right. So now let us also try to understand. Let us try to now understand the if and if command. So again, over here, I hope it's done for all of you. Okay. Yes, Vanshika. What kind of error? okay no 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 you don't have to use the rows you have to use range because obviously uh, in rows you have to select the entire you have to use the range command hmm. you have to use the range command all right so now here the next thing please see 
now let us uh, use whatever we have done till now so i will write in cell a5 i am writing enter cell a5 i am writing enter your age and here the person will write the age so let me just quickly highlight this okay so here the person will write their age and then i want to check the eligibility eligibility or maybe are you eligible ha huh? no 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 you don't have to use different modules in one module only you can create correct correct so basically see what happens that he is asking do we have to create separate modules for separate sheets no whatever is your active sheet na your code will be executed over there if this is my active sheet for example this is my active sheet if i execute this code see it's executed over here in this sheet so whatever is your active sheet your code will be executed over there if you want to go sheet wise we'll see this later on uh, which is your worksheet event okay so i want to check the uh, whether you are eligible or not eligible or not for voting okay so i've just written it over here you all can just write it anyway now i'll be using the if else if codes so i'll create a new subroutine sub voting eligibility okay now what is my question my question is if anyone puts any user puts an input over here if the user puts an input of age over here then i want to return an output if it's greater than 18 18 or greater than 18 then i want a message box displaying you are eligible for voting if the value is below 18 then i want to hide then i want to show a message box saying that you are not eligible for voting clear understood so now let me just write the code first of all i will declare this i will declare i just like remember we took name i'll take age and you can take any x y z variable so i'll take age dim age as integer because it has to be in the form of integer if someone inputs anything else they should get a error or not an error we'll give a message box saying your age is not correct okay so please see now age remember we took name name equal to input box but now not input box from range a6 they will extract the value so range a6 dot value it will extract the value from range a6 now if age is greater than equal to 18 so i'm also using greater than equal to logical operator then move to the next line click on tab why i use tab na see your code should always look very neat because when you read it later on it should look understandable and neat so when i move to the next line make sure you just click on one tab button it moves inwards so that it understand you can understand later on that okay this is a part of if statement okay so what was my code that if if the condition then the true statement the true statement is if it is greater than equal to 18 then the message box should display congratulations you are ready to vote any any message okay otherwise <clears throat> else else i want to give a message box i want to give a message box saying you are not ready for the vote you are not eligible to vote okay all these spaces are not important actually but just so that i am clicking on tab button just so that it looks neat eligible end if 
end if writing end if is very important this states that your if statement is ending over here this states that your end uh, this is ending over here okay is this clear no 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 ha space sensitive it is it takes by default it will give these space spaces when you move to the next line for example here I, if i don't give the space and i move to the next line by default it will give the space so it is space sensitive but these spaces does not count this is just for how i want it to look like okay now if i enter the age over here what will happen see currently there is no age for example a age i enter the age let me write 25 okay i enter 25 now let me just step into the code you can just straight away run it it will give you congratulations you are ready to vote i'll change the age to maybe 15 then again run it so it will give me you are not eligible to vote you can also add a you can also add a button over here when the user will click on that particular button it will give the input now another thing if you want that after this particular statement is done you want that your range this particular range should again turn back to blank this also you can do meaning it will perform all these tasks and then again it will turn to blank for another user for another user all right for another user to come in and enter the age again so again if i run this you are not eligible to vote okay and see it turns into a blank space because what i have written range a6 blank just double or uh, double uh, quotes not ha beech mein this is equal to okay clear are you all following so this is how you can use the if statement this is how you write your if statement clear the next conditional statement which i was talking about is your select is your select case so in this what happens it's similar to that of your if statement but here you select a case and basically you select this any any expression you select if that expression takes one particular value then what do you want to perform if it takes some other value then what do you want to perform and so on so it's like if statement but in a better modified manner so now let us take a very interesting example i have over here you all can move to sheet 3 and you all will see we have this input we have these inputs over here okay all right so now what i want to do is now i want to uh, what i want to do is i want to basically here i have written add subtract multiply you all remember there is something called as list which you all can create in excel a drop down box a list so here i want to let me create a drop down over here in this particular cell c8 how to create a drop down data tab data tools uh, here data validation here we'll select data tab data tools data validation here i'll select list in list i will select this entire four values and click on okay and see you have a list you have a list okay create a list over here hmm 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 and now if you all also want you all can insert quickly a shape to which we'll assign the macro sure 
सो बेसिकली जस्ट टेक योर कर्सर ओवर ह्योर डेटा टैब डेटा वैलिडेशन ह्योर यू विल हैव टू सिलेक्ट लिस्ट एंड इन दिस सोर्स यू हैव टू सिलेक्ट दिस फोर सेल्स एंड क्लिक ऑन ओके एंड ऑटोमेटिकली यू हैव अ ड्रॉप डाउन ओके आई हैव क्रिएटेड दिस बिकॉज आई वॉन्ट टू असाइन माई माइक्रो टू दिस पर्टिक्युलर बटन दिस पर्टिक्युलर बॉक्स शेप सो नाउ माई कोड इज नाउ माई कोड इज हाउ इट विल लुक लाइक सो आई वॉन्ट टू यूज आई वॉन्ट टू बेसिकली सब लेट मी जस्ट गिव द नेम एज मेनू सो ओवर ह्योर फर्स्ट अंडरस्टैंड फर्स्ट इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट यू वॉन्ट टू डू सो वॉट आई वॉन्ट टू डू इज आई वॉन्ट टू वॉट एवर वैल्यू आई चेंज ओवर ह्योर एंड देन मैन आई रन ऑन द कोड रन ऑन द सब रूटीन इट शुड गिव मी अ रिजल्ट ओवर ह्योर सो इफ इट्स फिफ्टी सिक्सटी सेवन इट शुड मल्टीप्लाई द टू एंड गिव मी द रिजल्ट इट शुड डिवाइड इट एंड गिव मी द रिजल्ट और सब्ट्रैक्ट इट और एड इट वट एवर एंड गिव मी द रिजल्ट ओके वेरी वेरी बेसिक सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वॉट आई वॉन्ट इज आई वॉन्ट टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट वैल्यू इज मैंशन ओवर ह्योर इज दिस मल्टीप्लाई इज दिस एड or whatever value is here so for this let me assign this value to a particular variable because this can change so let me take it as dim x as string again because it's a string right it's a string this particular number this particular value is a string cell a c8 is a string now what value you want to assign to x range this is c8 for me if it is something different for you please make sure you check it dot value okay dot value now i will use the select statement so select case x i have selected i have selected the case and this is the expression x my expression is x Okay, my expression is x. So I have selected the case x. Now, if case is add the capitals, if the case, if this particular case is add, it can be add, subtract, anything, huh? Now, if it is add, then what I want to do is, if it is add, then I then what I want to do is in range b eight. in range b8 i want the value as what i want the value i want to add the two numbers right so b6 this particular b6 plus b7 simple this is what i want to do this is what i want to do if it is add then this is what i want to do if case is so select case meaning x is my case of concern if the case of concern is add then this so basically select case select case meaning you are selecting one case x is the case of concern expression of concern now what all values your expression of concern can take your expression can take the value add if it takes the value add what do you want to perform you want to perform in cell range b8 in range b8 you want to add the value in b6 and that is that uh, b8 dot value equals to a b6 plus b7 value okay and i'll just copy these two and paste it over here and paste it over here and paste it over here if the case is now for example subtract then it will be what in range b8 we want b6 minus b7 if the case is multiply then what i want multiply sign if it is division or divide for me it is divide then what i want the divide sign okay now you have to tell your vba that you want to end your select statement like we end if over there end if similarly you want to tell your 
VBA that I want to end select. Okay. This is how you write. So see over here what I have done. See over here. Select case. I have given the test expression as x. If x takes one particular value, case sum, then what do you want? Case multiply, then what do you want and so on. Okay. So now currently it's multiply. Let us do one thing. Let us run the code. So see, it's multiplying the two numbers. If you want to subtract, run, it subtracts the two values. Let us assign the code to this particular menu. Okay. So I have to just click on this. Change the list to maybe divide. Click on this and it divides the two numbers. You can change the numbers and check. You can change the numbers and check. But what if, please see, what if by mistake someone overrides this? Someone overrides this to any other value. I have overwritten this, although you cannot do it, but what if someone just overrides it? Or maybe it's not taking any value. What if someone overrides this? Then what will happen? Then it should give me an error. Then it will give me an error, right? So how to deal with that? You can write case else. Anything other than add, subtract, multiply, divide. Anything other than that, I will write message box invalid input. Okay. So now for example, let me just change this multiply to MUL. For example, uh, you have this multiply, but you don't have multiply written over here. You have multiply, but here you have MUL for example. Okay. Now let us run the code. Invalid input. So anything other than add, subtract, multiply, divide, anything other than that will give you this particular case else. So that is why we call it as select case else select. See I have written, I have written case else. Other than whatever it's over here, what is the, other than any of the expression, what do you want? All right. All right. Okay, now just a small topic and then we'll move to looping. I'll give you a break and then we'll move to looping. Now we have done the conditional statement in the con uh, control flow statement. In the control flow, we have conditional if, else and we have also done select case. Very, very basic, right? Now there is something called as active cell properties. What do you mean by active cell property? For example, if my, uh, let me create a new sheet. If I, if I am on this particular sheet, if my cursor is here in cell three, uh, C3, then this is my active cell. This is my active cell, right? This is my active cell. So what I want to do is uh, for this active cell, for example, I want to uh, take out the value of this active cell. So what I can do is let me write sub. You cannot actually use active cell. Let me use active cell properties. Okay. So here, for example, I want what is mentioned in my active cell. So I can write x equal to active cell dot value. 
and then I can give a message box of x. Okay. So for example, here I have written x, y, z, whatever. Okay. Run this code. Message box gives me. Okay. Why it gives me an empty value? Because my current active cell is cell C4. If I take it to cell C3 and then run it, X, Y, Z. Whatever your active cell is and whatever value is there in the active cell will give you the answer. Okay. Clear? If you are writing a number and your active cell is this, run this, 7. Whatever your active cell is. Okay. Uh, you can also change, you can also want to change the value. You can write active cell dot value and you can change it to new value. I'm just giving any random new value. Okay. So for example, I run this code now. So it gives me seven and then it changes to new value. So first it, ra uh, it ran this and this, then it ran this particular code. Okay. You can, or you also have active cell dot address. So address is basically the address of the cell. D3, C3, these are all addresses. So let me put this in, put this in A and let me then get the message box of A. So I'll all, I'll keep this into, I'll just change this into a comments. So it's not executable now. So my current cell is over here. So see, your message box gives D3, D3, the address of the cell. No, no. Sometimes it will work, sometimes it will not. Equal to. Sometimes it might work, but it's not a correct approach. It will take it as a minus sign most of the times. Okay. And it's not a good approach. You can also take out message box and you can also give active cell dot row. So dot row gives you the row number basically. All right. So let me run this. First it gives you D3 and then it gives you the row number. Similar to row, you can also get the column number. Okay, so in column in VBA, generally the column names are not given, the column numbers are given, so four. Similarly, when we'll be moving on and we'll be writing codes, we'll see we are not using E, F, we are using four, five. Okay, like that. For example, just like range, we use the range function. You can also write range one comma one, cell one comma one, cells. 1 comma 1 see row in row index column index dot value equal to VBA okay so if I run this first of all address all this and then VBA so cells is again a function like range okay in cells you can give only one cell in range you can give range of cells all right making sense so last thing uh, that I want to show for this particular section is a very interesting function you have done in Excel is offset function. If you have learned um, advanced Excel, then you have learned offset function. Same function is there over here as well. Same function is uh, there over here as well. For example, let me just write a few numbers. Minus 8. Uh, minus 8. Why it gives me an error? Because maybe I have to change this to a general. Okay. Okay. Minus 8. Minus 7. 6. Whatever. Alright. So I have given a few numbers over here. Now let us create a new subroutine. Let us create a new subroutine. Uh, let me write sub example. Let me write sub example. So here I will again take the active cell property. So let me just write 
x equal to active cell dot value. You all can do this along with me. It's very simple. Now I, I'll use if statement. I want to use that if. Now understand this thing. You all can write the code on your own. If the active cell, whatever the active cell is, if the active cell value is less than zero, then I want a value here beside that active cell on the right of the active cell that um, negative. Or if it's positive, I want a value on the right as positive. Remember, we are using active cell. So now in this case, what is happening? If I'm writing x is less than 0, then if I'm writing if x is less than 0, actives if and then if you're writing range, this is b11, huh, no? b11 dot value equal to negative. This is what you have written, for example, and else it should be positive. Considering zero is positive. So now what is the problem over here end if? What is the problem over here when I run this code? Currently I am in B A11. When I run this code, I'll get negative. But what if I'm in this particular cell and I write 7? This is my active cell. And again, I hit my values are changing over here because I've hard coded it as B11. Instead of this, I have to write active cell and active cell dot offset. Offset function is to move number of rows right, number of columns right and number of columns rows down. So how many, how many, uh, sorry, how many rows do you want to move down? Zero. Because if this is my active cell, for example, if this is my active cell, then I want to move zero rows down. So I will write zero. How many columns do you want to move right? One. Now this will give you the correct answer. So you have to obviously write dot value as well. Okay. So this is the offset function you can use. Copy paste it. Okay. Now you all can just run this and check. So it gives you negative. If your active cell is over here, Negative, if your active cell is over here, positive. So wherever your active cell is, you will get your answer. Doesn't matter, it will not take you back to range B11. If you are writing, for example, 3, 1, 0 rows down, 3 columns to the right, right? So I am keeping my cursor over here, 1, 2, 3. You can also do this, you can also write minus 1. Minus 1 is it will take you to the left. So if I'm here, left. Minus a number of rows you can write for example 1. If this is my active cell. So what, hap what is happening? 1 row to the down and 1 row to the left. Clear? So this is about active cell properties. You have n number of active cell properties. You have to play with it and offset function. Okay. Last thing that we'll do. Remember that we also made a module over here and here we just recorded a macro where I selected a cell. I changed it into yellow. We were recording the color. Right. So here they have done one thing. They have used with and with. You have to change multiple properties of a single selection of a single cell of a single selected range of cells. Then you again and again we write like this. Now we write dot offset or maybe here when we were writing dot font dot bold dot font dot color dot font dot italics dot font dot underline so you don't have to write it again and again you can use with end with okay so let's take an example it become it will become clear 
For example, um, I want to select these cells. Okay, let me just write random numbers. I want to select these cells and then after selecting after selecting after selecting these cells i want to change the font bold underline italics everything i want to do so i will write first of all i want to select the cells now so range a1 colon c1 dot selection dot selection or select anything dot selection uh, just keep it as select make it as selection once and check if it happens so I will write with selection dot font okay so with the selection so this is selected. So with selection dot bond. So this is the selection with selection dot font. What I want to do is dot bold equal to true dot italics equal to true dot underline equal to true and dot color equal to VB red okay and then obviously you will have to you will have to end with okay so let's try let's try running this okay it gives me an error um, let me make it as let me just select this and then run hmm. dot italics ok so I think dot italics is wrong you have to use dot italic let me try yes okay whenever you enter into an error for example here I'll we'll deal with error in the last class so here whenever you enter for example if you are entering into an error you are running this so it always give you some number of error is there object doesn't support this property so try to understand it's very difficult actually to understand always and when we are starting it's difficult I'll un teach you all how to handle errors in the last class but you can click on debug so when you click on debug it will take you to exact location where the error is happening so you can understand you can change and then you can click on this particular button reset what reset will do it will change it will take your again code to the start make your changes and then try to run it so range first of all range a1 to C1 select that and with selection do all these things dot font so again and again you don't have to write range A1 dot A uh, colon A C1 dot font dot bold dot you don't have to write it again and again you just have to use with this whatever you want to do and then end with clear with the selection whatever you want to do and then just end with understood so this is how we use with and with now in the next class we'll be starting with the looping very interesting topic and we'll be also doing three case studies any question in this particular part anyone any question <laughs>